What's happening everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Adam, this is Van City Audi and I'm back with the B9S4 for a cosmetic mod today. We're gonna be installing the iGround Canada B9S4 honeycomb grill on the front of the car. It kind of resembles the look of an RS4. Obviously we don't have an RS4 here in Canada. So I ordered one from iGround Canada. I'll show you the actual grill itself. Then I'm here at a different shop today. I'm here visiting my buddy Chris. We're gonna do the install here. Rider Performance hates doing these with me. <laughs> so I don't blame them. We're more of the mechanical stuff over there. So today we're just strictly doing a cosmetic mod. We'll see how well it fits. I'll give you the before and after look to show you what the car looks like now with the OEM grill versus what it looks like with the upgraded grill from iGround Canada. Here's the grill I chose to go with. It's as if the car will have the black optics trim. Currently, it has the aluminum trim. The 2018 models didn't have the black optics as a package. So this is what I'm doing to kind of make up for it. I got the gloss black rings and I also had the option of having quattro lettering here. Black, silver, or none at all. I really like the minimalistic look, so I didn't go with any quattro lettering because I think it's a lot more clean on the front where you don't have that extra badging on the bottom. Here's the final look of the front of my B9S4 with this OEM grill installed. I also already have purchased the license plate tow hook mount from Extreme Online Store that can be found on eBay if you really like the way that looks. Time for the install guys. Let's get this OEM grill off and the iGround Canada Black Optics Honeycomb grill on instead. First thing Chris does is remove my tow hook mounted license plate. Once he's completed that, he removes the hood latch so he can remove the big piece of plastic right underneath that. He then takes out the four bolts he's just revealed by removing that piece of plastic. Next, he jumps over to removing all of the screws that are holding the fender liner to the bumper and the one bolt that he has to peel back the fender liner and use an extension to get to just to be able to reach that final bolt. After he's done that to both sides, he then removes every bolt he can find on the bottom of the bumper. Next, he very carefully pops off the corners of the bumper. Be careful while doing this so you don't break the tabs. We then remove the entire bumper from the front of the car. Seeing as he needed my help, I sadly didn't catch the inside of the bumper where he had to remove the connection to the front camera, as well as the connection to the parking sensors. This can be a little finicky, which is what took him so long to disconnect. Once the bumper has been removed, he proceeds to take out every single screw that is holding the grill to the inside of the bumper. They run all the way around the grill. After the screws had been removed, he then uses a 90 degree pick to pull off all of the tabs that are holding the parking sensor cable in place along the side and bottom of the grill. With all of the tabs being removed, he then needs to remove the sensors themselves. With a couple gentle applications of pressure on the top and bottom of the tabs, he's able to remove the sensors. Now that all of this has been done on the inside of the bumper, he lays it down to remove the final screws that are holding the bumper to the front skid plate. Once the screws have been removed, he uses that same 90 degree pick to unclip some final clips on the inside of the bumper that are still holding the plastic piece to the bumper. Lastly, he removes the parking sensor clips that were running along the bottom to physically pull it off of the bumper. Then he has to remove a small plastic grill that runs along the bottom of the bumper. This piece must be removed because it pops back on and holds the new grill in place once it's been installed. Now for the part he struggled with the most. The uppermost large clips that were connecting the OEM grill to the inside of the bumper were a pain to remove. He was careful enough to not break them, but he needed to use window cleaner on one of them to help slide it out of place. After that was completed, he could remove the entire OEM grill from the inside of the bumper. Now that the OEM grill has been removed, I just wanted to show you side by side what the two grills look like. As you can see, there's a lot more open space in the middle of the new grill. I'm hoping that will provide some better airflow over the engine during drag racing, hoping to cool down everything a bit better. But there you go, side by side. Time to get the new honeycomb grill installed. See if we can spice up the front of the car a bit. 
I found this part of the product a little odd. Chris had to remove the outside front lip of the new grill to be able to install it. I was thinking that if they needed it to be installed separately, it would have come in two separate pieces. But I imagine this was done to protect the shape of the slim plastic frame of the grill during shipping. This was by far the most time consuming part of the install. The lip has a lot of small plastic clips that hold on to it onto the front of the grill. Once that lip has been completely removed, you can gently snap the new grill into the inside of the bumper. He hand turns a couple of screws into the grill to get it to stay in place while fitting all the other clips into the right place. After the new grill has been put into its place, it's time to reinstall that small plastic grill he took out which lays over top the bottom of the new grill to provide it more rigidity. Then he puts all of the screws that he removed back into the new grill. If you notice though, he doesn't use a power tool of any type to put the screws back in. He hand tightens all of them to make sure he doesn't over torque anything and possibly break the plastic. It's obviously more time consuming this way, but it ensures your new grill is in tip top shape after install and not cracked or broken from you drilling something into it too hard. With all the screws in, he then reinstalls the parking sensors and runs the cable along the same path that it ran with the OEM grill. He reattaches all of the clips he disconnected back onto the rear of the new grill. Then he reattaches the front skid plate. With that attached, he can reconnect all of the tabs that he disconnected from the skid plate in the first place. At that point of the installation, the new grill onto the inside of the front bumper should look like this. He then robs the front camera from the OEM grill. So the first hiccup we're kind of having is for the front camera. The way it mounts in here, it sticks out pretty darn far. So we're gonna have to see how that works out. Secondly, the screws that come with the car seem to be a little too big for the actual spots for it to go in for this front camera. So we're gonna have to play around with it to get it figured out. Luckily, Chris happened to have some screws that were a little narrower and longer. So he used those screws instead of the OEM ones. So now that we've tightened up those screws on the back of the grill, this camera sticks out way further on this grill than it did on the OEM grill. We're gonna see if we run into any problems with how the camera works with how far it's sticking out now. Sadly, we've run into the second thing that didn't quite go as planned. There's a double-sided tape on these parking sensor mounts that connect. And while putting one in and tightening it, it came right off. So we're gonna remove this or we're just gonna simply put glue over top of the adhesive to try to get this to stick properly. Chris sanded both surfaces before applying any adhesive. He dabbed a little on his finger and then spread a very thin layer on both the face of the parking sensor mount as well as on the inside of the mounting point on the new grill. He then firmly presses on both sides for a couple minutes to get it to properly bond before releasing. The final piece to the install is attaching that thin trim piece that Chris removed. With the entirety of the new grill attaching to the inside of the front bumper, this piece snaps into place from the outside of the front bumper, locking the grill into place. He was very careful again when snapping together all the plastic clips to make sure he didn't break any in the process. Front bumper's been popped back on. None of the screws have been tightened or anything, but I just wanted to show you guys. Clearly that is an eyesore with that being what it is, all shiny and silver. So when we do more work on the car rider performance later on, I'm gonna spray this black and I'll get you guys some shots afterwards to show you guys what it looked like when it was all completed and painted. Cause right now, <laughs> 
not so nice looking. So before we button everything up, we wanted to make sure that the camera works and the sensors work. So the car's on, put it in drive, and now we'll get Chris to stand in front of the sensor. There you go. All working, showing that the sensors are working and the camera's working. There it is guys, all completed. Chris is done with the install, all buttoned up. Bolts are in, screws are in, all completed. As I just previously mentioned, we're definitely gonna have to do something about that crash bar and paint that next time we're at Rider Performance and we have the bumper off. Overall though, worked out rather well and looks really good. So besides that front camera sticking out just a little bit further on this grill than on the OEM grill and having to replace the double-sided tape with some actual adhesive on that camera, Everything went rather well. Very nice fitment. The plastic is nice and solid. Didn't break any clips. That's partially in uh, thanks to Chris for doing a very, very meticulous job on the installation. But very impressed with the product from iGround Canada and I do recommend it. Uh, it looks solid. We'll see how it holds up. Obviously, everyone daily drives their vehicles. Some people race them. It's different wear and tear. But for the most part, it looks great and we'll see how it holds up. Thank you all for watching. Uh, we're gonna see what we can do to kind of make the rest of the car match that grill in the coming weeks. I won't be doing a video on that, but follow me on social media to see more. That's Van City Audi on Facebook and on Instagram. And I think that I'm gonna wrap the rest of the trim black as well to match that black optics look that I was going for. Because they didn't offer it in 2018, I'm doing the best that I can to make up for it now after the fact. Thank you all for watching and until next time, take care.